Listen, I want us to take a look at a scripture this morning from the Old Testament book of Judges. Amen. Mm -hmm. Book of Judges. And uh, uh, Judges is right after Joshua. And, and uh, we're going to look at the fifth chapter of the twelfth verse this morning. Those of you using a few Bibles, you can find it on page 161. Amen. 161. Judges. The uh, fifth chapter. Mm -hmm. And we're just going to investigate the twelfth verse this morning. Amen. 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 When you arrive there, you'll find these words. Awake! Awake, Deborah. Awake! Awake! Utter a song. Arise, Barak. And lead thy captivity captive. Glory. Thy son of Abinam. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 I just want to preach this morning just for a little while. Amen. All right, go ahead. Don't have but a little while, but I want to preach this morning on the topic if there must be one. Arise, Barak, and set thy captivity captive. Pray with me, if you will. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you would come into this place in the form of your precious Holy Spirit. Yes. Yes. That you would touch the hearts and the minds of this waiting congregation. Lord, I ask that you would take me now and hide me behind the shadow of the cross. Yes. Lord. They might not see me, but Christ in me. Yes. Father God, I ask right now that you bless somebody's soul. Yes. That you cleanse them and make them whole. In the matchless name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Amen. Arise, Barak, and set thy captivity captive. Amen. 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 I, I don't know if you've ever been excited about something that you got a little ahead of yourself and started celebrating early. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes you get so excited and so caught up in in something that you you start to celebrate, and you start to celebrate too soon. Amen. Amen. That, that's the way it is in life. Sometimes, you know, uh, it's called anticipation. Uh, you anticipate that a certain thing is going to happen. Many of us anticipate that uh, we're going to see another day. And we get excited uh, thinking of the prospect of what we're going to do tomorrow. Amen. Uh, uh, yeah, sometimes we can't sleep at night just, uh, thinking about something that's going to happen tomorrow. We, we begin to celebrate how, how we're going to open those presents on Christmas morning. Uh, we begin to celebrate how it's going to be such a wonderful birthday celebration for us, all the while not realizing that we might be celebrating too soon. Amen. Uh, it's been that way in history, although we, uh, 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 we have been warned uh, uh, about the dangers of celebrating victories before we win them. Uh, there are times when the temptation to celebrate early is just too tempting. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. We, 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 just, we just get so excited that we want to celebrate uh, even though the victory has not yet been completely won. Uh, uh, if we get too excited, we can lose focus on, on the work that needs to be done. If we get too excited, we can forget the fact that, that everything has not yet been completed even though victory looks like it's right at hand. All right, go ahead. Uh, somebody going to help me today. Go ahead, please. Uh, yeah, if you get too excited, the great victory celebration yes. can quickly turn into a lament of defeat. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, uh, a lot of people remember back in 1948 when the President of the United States 
uh, was was up for election and 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 and, and Mr. Thomas Dewey was running for president. Thomas Dewey was so far ahead in the polls and and everybody thought that Thomas Dewey was going to be the one to win. All right. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The newspaper, the Chicago Tribune, they even print a headline ahead of time saying that Dewey wins by a landslide. Ah, uh, yeah, but the next day when the tallies were counted and when the votes were taken, they found out that, that Harry S. Truman Amen. had won by a landslide. They started to celebrate too soon before all the work had been done. Somebody going to help me get here today? And, and see, when we start to remember history, we know that, that uh, while it's tempting to celebrate before the victory is won, right. especially right. when the victory seems so obvious, when it seems like it's so sweet, amen, but so many of the times you need to hold on and use some caution. All right. Yeah. Even with caution, to just the thought of victory. After years of being defeated, after years of being downtrodden, just the thought of victory starts to be exciting. All right. So whenever we get in the situation uh, in our lives and, uh, where we want to be cautious about anticipation and, and we want to be deliberate about our, our, our determination and, 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 and we want to become completely victorious. We don't just want to win one battle, but we want to be completely victorious. Uh, we don't want to get too excited before all the work has been done. We don't want to get too ahead of ourselves. Amen. There's still some battles that need to be fought. All There's right. still yeah. some right. victories right. that need to be accomplished. Right. Yeah. We don't want to get too excited because right. of one. Somebody going to help me. All, right. right. all right. All right. Yes, no. Not too soon. And this truth exists in every part of life. Yes. Uh, you should never assume victories. All right. Uh, him and then uh, lay down your shield yes. and lay down your sword yes. before the battle is completely over. Mm -hmm. You should, however, anticipate the victory. That's right. But you ought to remain vigilant. Yes, and you ought to still fight on. Yes. And you ought to realize that because we're fighting life battles, that there are many more that are going to come against us. All right. But we face all of our battles and our anticipation of victory because we sense the hand of God moving in this situation. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. There have been so many things that have happened over the last two years that can only be attributed to the hand of God. Ah, yeah. Things have been set up that can only be attributed to the hand of God. Yes, there have been great campaign managers. Yes, there have been great volunteers, but there's some things that when you look at them in hindsight, you say, that had to be God. Yes. Right. Yes. Y'all yes. gonna help me in a minute. Y'all gonna help me in a minute. Huh? Fix it. I, 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 I'm looking at a text this morning in the Old Testament book of Judges. Yes. And it focuses on the song of praise for the victory of Deborah and Barak. Right. Yes. Uh, Barak had routed Sisera and Jabin's captain and all of the hosts that came against him. Yes. With 10,000 men, he had completely demoralized and destroyed the enemy. And all that was left was the victory party. Uh, uh, here, Deborah, the great champion of the judges, and Barak, the careful, insightful, but formidable leader of the great army became the objects of a song of victory. Amen. And the people sang since most of the hard work had been done. Uh, most of the campaigning had been done. Yeah. And most of the fighting had been done. And, right. and every the tally was already up. They were positioned to celebrate. Uh -huh. And the Song of Victory admonishes Deborah to awake and Barak to rise up and claim the victory that yes. will set the captives completely free. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, this text focuses on these two characters, Deborah and Barak. Mm -hmm. Deborah was one of the few named women who were called to leadership oh, right. in the Good Old Lord. Testament. Okay. 
uh, she was a prophetess. Yes. She was a judge and, and, and she was a, a military leader. And as a judge, she decided the disputes between the people under Deborah's tree. And as a military leader, she actually led men into battle, which was very strange for a woman of that time. And in an earlier chapter, when we look at Deborah, we find out uh, that Deborah was commanded by God to speak to an obscure young man by the name of Barak and to tell him that God would use him to assemble a large army of followers for what seemed to be an impossible task of lifting the people to victory and lifting them against tremendous odds. He was called to assemble an army from diverse tribes, uh, uh, from the tribes to the north and from the tribes to the south. He, he, was, he was called to assemble an army of, of, of people of different nationalities and to make this victory his. And then besides that, he had to convince them that they could rise to victory. He had to convince them that after suffering defeat for so long, that they could win this thing, that they could win this battle. And he had to inspire them and, and, and push them on and, and get them to realize that, yes, we can. I know that I know that the enemies are against us. I, I know that our enemies are strong, but with the Lord on our side, we can win this thing. Yes, we can. Responding to this call from Deborah, the weapons of war were all put together and Barak prepared for battle and, and having little experience in the battle, but moving at God's command. Thousands rallied around him, the All two right. tribes that were of the same nationality but of different interests and people who were of different nationalities. They, they rallied around the rocket. However, under the rock, they combined forces to form one mighty army. All right. All right. And just before it was time to march into victory, Devorah presents him with a new song. Yes. It's the song of victory. Yeah. It's a song of celebration for victory of Deborah and Barak specifically. But it's also a type of song of victory for our Savior, Jesus Christ. That's the kind of song he's going to have when he finally ascends to the throne. The great victory over sin being won. And the devil and the grave being set into captivity. Now, that phrase that she used in the song, set thy captivity captive, it's not an isolated phrase. It's been used before in the scripture. Most often, it's been used to celebrate Christ's impending victory over sin. In Psalm 68 and 18, David says, speaking about the Christ that would come, he says, thou has ascended on high. Yes. Thou hast led captivity captive. Yes, no. Thou hast received gifts for men. Yes. Yea, for the rebellious also. Yes. That the Lord God might dwell among them. Yes. David saw yes. the victory yes. before it happened. Yes. That the Lord was preparing to dwell among men yes. and be the victor. Yes. And in the same text, uh, excuse me, in uh, this is the same text that yeah. was referred to in Ephesians 4 and 8. All right. yeah, yeah, Wherefore he hath yeah, yeah. he said when he ascended up on high he led captivity captive yeah. and gave gifts unto men in well, celebration. Well, well, so this phrase my brothers and sisters is a phrase of victory. All right, well, victory. Yeah. Uh, not of man but of God. Yeah. Uh, because God went in to captivity yeah, 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 and yeah, yeah. led death captive All right. All right. and the grave to rise up in victory yes. yeah. on his resurrection. Yeah. So the song's theme, Arise Barak, yeah. was a call to rise up and claim the victory. Yeah. It was also a call to the people to do what needed to be done yeah. in order to ensure that the triumphal march that we're about to go on would be succeeded 
by the work that needed to be done to set the captive, the captivity captive. Are y'all following me this morning? I'm just trying to help you. Let me tell you something. We've been captive. That's right. Oh, yeah. Millions in this nation that have been held captive and we wait anxiously for God to make our captivity captive. Uh, some of us are waiting for the day that Amos saw when he declared justice will run down like wars and righteousness like a mighty stream. When the prospect of realizing Dr. Martin Luther King's dream yes. right. seems closer than ever right now. All right. yes. There's some excitement all around the world. All right. Yes. And those who have been distant from realizing the American dream start to sit up and take notes. Yes. The cry of the rock <laughs> arise and set the captivity right. yes. captive is a call to arms, my brothers and sisters. Yes. 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 It's not a call to lay back on our laurels and right. pat ourselves on the back for the vote that we cast. Right. It's not a call to lay back and expect all right. All right. one man to solve all of our problems. Yeah. Yeah. But it's a call for us to come together as one mighty army and set our captivity captive. It's similar to the call that the children of Israel gave any time they went to battle. Yes. Yes. <laughs> what they would do is they would place the ark of the covenant, y'all yes. gonna help me, Go in front of them. Yes. And they would chant, Rise up, O Lord. May our enemies be scattered. Yes. Yes. May our foes flee before you. Yes. And while the cry in this text was yes. to the yes. yes. and Barak, yes. yes. those of us who live on the fumes of this hope that we in. Yes. Right. On the fumes of this victory that we've already accomplished. Oh, Not do we give the, 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 we don't give the credit to Barack alone. All right. All right. Uh, but it's unto the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. For the, just, the disenchanted are going to cry out today. Yeah. Arise, O oh Lord, in, in the humiliation. Yeah. Some of us are going to cry out. In the humiliation that's been going on yeah. in our land. Yeah. When we look at the people and they begin to make their plea. That we follow Israel's example. We, we put God in front of us and, and right. pray. But we pray as we march forward. Right. We put God in front of us and, and we pray as we fight on. Right. We don't right. stop and rest on our laws. Right. We've got a lot of work to do. And we yeah. cry out to God to arise and, right. and lift our yeah. humanity. Humiliating yeah, uh, right, condition. Yes. We've been the, the, the brunt of, 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 of blunt jokes and, and poison yeah, no. ten yeah, racial yeah, no. slurs and right. reaching ropes for yeah. so long. Yeah. Arise, oh Lord, yeah. and in our humiliation. Right. Our yeah. prayer to God is that no. He would usher in a no. day when yeah. no person will be humiliated yeah. because yeah. of their color. No person will be humiliated because of their ethnicity. Yeah. Arise, oh Lord. Yeah. We look for the day when we will be judged by the content of our character All and right. not the color of our skin. Yeah. Arise, oh Lord, and set our captivity captive. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. The cry goes out yeah. today. Arise, yeah. oh Lord, yeah. and end our suffering. Yeah. We make the plea of God because he alone knows what we have suffered. Yeah. I heard the old songwriter say, nobody knows. Nobody. The trouble I've seen. All right. Nobody knows but Jesus. That's why today I don't lift up my voice to Barack. I praise him for his accomplishment, but I lift up my voice to God because he knows my suffering. He's seen the scars on the backs of my great grandfather who shackled in slavery. God is the one that's seen the Native American locked away on reservations. Yeah. He has seen the Asian Americans shuttled into war camps. He's seen the Jews of the world 
tortured in Hitler's ovens, yes. the Holocaust, yes. tortured yes. in public appearance, yes. uh, public appearance, right. he, opinion, he's seen the women of the world pushed to the back burner yes. and right. paid less than the very men that they worked side All by right. side yes. with. Yes. When we yes. cry out to Christ in our prayers and in our song, that was the cry that the songwriter wrote when he said, Jesus knows all about our struggles. He will die till the day is done. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. Not one. When we cry out, oh, I'm trying to preach this thing. We cry out, arise, O oh Lord, and set an end to our destruction. We see our families falling down around us. The blood of our young men is running literally up to the doorsteps of the church. And we cry out to the Lord. One man can't do it. But we got to come together and do this thing. Where can we go but to the Lord? The destruction is intertwined into our system that it is bigger than one man. And, and alone he can't fight the one battle, the hope that needs to be given to all of us cannot fade. It cannot fade because the election is over. It cannot fade because the excitement is over. It cannot fade because the fireworks have ended. We've got work to do. Too many of our men are abandoning their families. Too many of our boys are being locked away and killed. Too many of our girls are becoming mothers before they, they, they complete Come becoming adults. Man. Too many of our families are dissolving, leaving our children orphans, the last ones to be adopted in the system of America. And many of our schools are graduating illiterate young men and women. Too many of our children are aspiring to live the thug life and are satisfied to not only live in the ghetto, but to let the ghetto live in them. We can't stop fighting just because the election is over. We are watching the social order that has sustained us for generations to come. Our financial institutions are in shambles. Our companies are closing. And the black folk are the first one to be fired and to be laid off. We can't stop fighting because the election is over. That's why we look to God and cry out, Arise, O oh Lord. And in this destruction, before the destruction can stop, hope must be restored. We must begin to believe in ourselves again, my brothers and sisters. That's why we look to God to inspire and motivate us to see that we can do better. We can rise higher. We can overcome. We can look to God to speak to this destruction that it might pass. Can we get up? Can we fight on? Yes, we can. We can do this together as a people. All right. So I got to leave you now. But I just wanted to share some thoughts. That I've been thinking about over the last few weeks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Deborah's song was a call to victory and triumph. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The victory that Barack was being called to celebrate is not his own. But it was God's victory. All right. All right. Over the forces right. that yeah. held justice, yes. mercy, and compassion yeah, yeah. captive. Yeah. All right. When the children of Israel marched out of Egypt 400 years of slavery mm -hmm. had passed. Oh, yeah. And they started to celebrate. Yeah. And they sang a song of triumph. Mm -hmm. But it was the exodus. Yes, but they were celebrating God's victory. Y'all yeah, yeah. don't hear me? Yeah. All right. All right. David yeah. danced All right. in the street oh, yeah. to celebrate the return of the ark. Yeah. He rejoiced. Uh -huh. But it was God's victory. Ah, when the psalmist declared in the 150th Psalm that we should let everything that have breath praise the Lord. He celebrated the victory of God's goodness. And when you think about the goodness of God and what he has planned for those who love him, 
it's all right to get excited. But you got to remember that there's still some work to do. I know that Barack Obama being elected to the presidency of the United States was an exciting thing. But I still believe what was said in 1 Corinthians 2 and 9. I have not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. Arise, O oh Lord, alter the paths of world events. In the world, make all captivity captive to ensure the victory. The people of God, you can't get idle. You can't rest on your laurels. You know the Lord has to keep us busy. We've got to keep confident that we can rise up despite all the things that's come against us. Arise, people of God. You've got to be busy showing compassion to those who have been downtrodden. Arise, people of God. You've got to be busy praying for the will of God to be shown in this new generation. Arise, people of God. You've got to be busy raising hope in the world that has been devastated. Arise, people of God. You must lift up the cross of Christ in the cross of Christ there is your hope I know you're hoping in Barack Obama but on the cross of Christ is where your hope should be on Christ the solid rock I stand all of the ground is sinking sand as long as I got King Jesus that's enough can sickness overtake me I don't think so can I lift up the generation of children if I got King Jesus yes we can can we crawl out of our past problems if I got King Jesus yes we can can we move forward as a black people in a white nation yes we can if I got King Jesus, that's enough. Long as I got King Jesus, he's gonna be all right. Pray for the president, but pray that the Lord will set captivity captive and we can rise up, rise up. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Ain't God all right? Did he do something great? Ain't God all right? Did he do something miraculous? Ain't God all right? Yes, we can. We can do anything with the Lord on our side. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, we can. Yeah. Yes, my, can I get my son out of jail? Yes, we can. Can I get my daughter back? Yes, we can. Can I get my finances right? Yes, we can. As long as I got King Jesus, that's enough. Hallelujah. 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 Arise. Arise. Set captivity captive. Yeah. Yeah. We used to be caught up. We used to be caught up in captivity. All right. That's all right, man. That's man, all right. The green mathematics. Working on the garbage truck. Oh, y'all don't hear me? A man with a degree, a degree in physics. Working down at the lumber yard. But God said, I'm going to make captivity. I'm going to take it and I'm going to make it captive. Yeah, yeah. They didn't think it could be done. But we got a lot of work to do. We can't stop now. You know how black folk are. They like to pull their leaders down. All right. 
They like to prove that. Yes, yes. Oh, he's just a man. Yes. He put his pants on the same way I do. But we got to lift this man up in yes, prayer. Yes, 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 we do. The road is going to be hard, make no doubt about it. It's not going to be easy. But we've already proved, yes, we can. We can do it with the Lord on our side. Amen. Ain't he all right? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Ain't God all right? Yeah. Ain't God all right? Yeah. 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 Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. He's all right. He's all right. Yeah. You know, he died oh, yes. one Friday. He's all right. And they took him down and he slept in the grave all night Friday and all day Saturday and all night Saturday night but early Sunday morning he got up and proved yes we can we can rise up we can rise up with all power not some power but all power in our hands Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Listen. All power in our hands. Jesus proved that you can go from the shotgun house to the White House. All right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Hallelujah. Look, the doors of the church are open. 